Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow with Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man. Woke up and got some uh, interesting rumors. Uh, Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, I heard is 90% done. You can catch it either July 18th is the date that's been rumored or in September. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video, and I'll get some boxing rumors in at the end. So uh, the undercard seemed to gonna be stacked too, all right? And I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, the fight is 90% done. Um, not sure what's Pacquiao next move going to be, but everything I've been hearing up to the following weeks, if the zone is still ticking, it's going to be uh, Pacquiao versus Mikey Garcia um, on the zone, right? I heard PBC was in the running for that fight. At one point, even Top Rank was in the running to put that fight on, but Bob ain't going to put that bread by, <laughs> up for that, that caliber of fight. So, um, obviously, if they consider, excuse me, fighting in a, uh, Fighting in uh, J July 18th, um, I guess Earl Spence has been cleared to go because right now we're in the middle of May. We're at the end of May, all right? So he he must have his weight down. Obviously, he said he was down to around 160. Danny been sparring big softballs before the pandemic started. So basically what they're going to have is around five or six weeks to get it popping. So I'm not sure what their intentions is to kickstart boxing. I know top rank, as we know, is going to kickstart box with two or three shows a week with five fight cards. It was originally supposed to be four. They're going to be doing it at the MGM uh, Grand Resort in Las Vegas. So, you know, Shaquille Stevenson and Nervete is kicking it off June 6th for Nervete. I think he could be fighting Diego De La Hoya June 9th. Uh, Shaquille Stevenson fighting somebody I can never remember the name. Cabrera or whatever his name is. He's going to be fighting him. Okay. So, it seems that PBC... Maybe just started to come back in the game in July. I don't know if they're going to do some small cards or whatever like that. But uh, we do know Luis Neary is no longer going to be fighting as a Texas Stadium, 7 Stadium. Um, he's going to be fighting possibly on the undercard of Danny Garcia and Earl Spence. So um, they're they looking at put, putting in, putting him versus undefeated Mexican fighter Aaron Amadala. Amadala, hopefully I'm saying his name right, El Tiger. Is his nickname? He like twenty something to know with thirteen knockouts. So Luis Neri is gonna probably be on the pay per view undercard. He's been on the pay per view undercard before. I think multiple pay per view undercards with PBC. I know one for sure. And David Benavidez is a fight fighter that's rumored to be on uh, the pay per view as well. So I think he gonna fight uh Ramir Romero, Alexis Romero. He had uh, just beat Anthony Sims on uh, the Zone in Miami on that YouTube undercard and Demetrius Andrade in the fight that had Tevin Farmer. And uh, and uh, Jojo Diaz, and I got a little bit of news about that coming in uh, towards the end of the video. So you know, at the end of the day, that's a quick. That mean, uh, you know, that mean if they doing July 18th and they doing that card, that mean Earl Spence ready to go. He been cleared um, his weight down. I know Danny, Danny, been, Danny be keeping his weight down. Danny had a new personal trainer. Um, and it's time to put up or shut up for Danny Garcia. This this is possibly the end of Danny Garcia. If he loses his fight, I don't see him going up to 54. He said he could go up to 54, you know, after this fight. Um, you know, like I said, the earlier this fight is, the better it is for Danny Garcia. All right? That's just plain and simple. Earl Spence get a couple more months to uh, get healthy, and they do it in September. That's all in Earl Spence's favor, you know, because then that would give you, depending on when they do it, that's going to give him like eight more weeks, four or five, six more weeks. You know, what talks about this fight falling off into – you know, uh, like November, Danny was saying, but now it sounds like they're saying September. Uh, so we're going to see it faster and fast. Obviously, it's going to have a pay-per-view price tag. It's going to be on Fox pay-per-view. I mean, you get Luis Neri, David Benavidez. I don't think this is a pay-per-view fight. But then again, you know, UFC put a pay-per-view fight on. They did 700000 so um with an $85 price tag. So I'm pretty sure if they, had, if they weren't successful, I don't think Al Heyman would have uh, did the pay-per-view, but the difference was by the time that pay-per-view came on, people had their stimulus checks, and they was willing to do anything for boxing. And if you get in boxing on ESPN, no matter what the caliber of it is, two or three shows a week, um, 
you got something. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, hopefully, be a top rank or the zone where the zone won't be back to later this year or here in September or August. Um, don't kind of, you know, try to put a same fight on that day. But I think a lot of people are going to order it um, just to intrigue of the fight. The fight became more intriguing due to Errol Spence's accident. Also, due to Sean Porter kind of, in some people's mind, exposing Errol Spence, which I just think that's what happened when you step up in level of opposition. So, you know, it should be a good fight. I think uh, dudes that tend to get Danny Garcia problems are dudes who are uh, who are able to get on their toes and box and be slick up top. Earl Spence ain't none of that. I always thought this was a good matchup for Danny Garcia's style. I'm not saying that he would dominate or, you know, I just thought he was always always be a competitive loser in this fight. And, um, you know, Earl Spence should be right there. You know, you got to worry about the head moving. You know what I'm saying? You square up a bit, you know. Um, he gonna take chances to the body, so that's really dangerous when you're dealing with a counter puncher. And then again, nobody knows his status as far as his health. I know he have a baby on the way, so you know he good enough to put that work in. You know, in the bed, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, don't mean he is good enough to put that work in, getting hit. So I don't even know if he started sparring yet. Like I said before, I believe this fight when it happened in July or September of this year. I'm, I anticipate they're trying to get Errol Spence to fight twice. So he probably would take this fight and possibly fight, you know, the IVF mandatory down the line. They should also throw the IVF mandatory fight on this undercard. It makes sense. Um, but maybe top rank will control that. You know, I don't know who was controlling that fight. I know TGB promotions and top rank got a deal. So Earl probably going to fight two mandatories this year. Um, if he able to get past Danny Garcia. And like I said, I just think it's a matchup that, you know, it's good for Danny Garcia. You ain't worried about Keith, you know, moving. And, you know, and you got to chase Keith and cut the ring off. That's Danny weakness. You ain't got to worry about, you know, being too slow for uh, Sean Porter and Sean Porter changing speeds, changing rhythms, going in and out. You know, and he, he still did pretty well versus that style. Um, but Errol Smith should be right there to hit. In the back of your mind, you know, he got into a car accident. It was traumatic. Um, but, you know, what you got to do is hope that he make it through sparring. That's both of them. Because when you, when you at home during the pandemic, some dudes ain't training as hard as they can. I, I anticipate if they talking about a July 18th. I know Danny been training before the pandemic. You know, I know Arrow got his weight down. But we'll see as far as camp injury. Sometimes when you don't push it to the limit, you know what I'm saying? You go to camp, you try to step it up in a short amount of time. Those soft tissue injuries hurt. Uh, hurt. You know, they get. You know, you get those injuries. You know, them shoulders hurt. So uh, we'll see. Arrow make it through a camp of sparring. There'd be fools not to turn up sparring for Earl. He should spar. It looks like he sparred for a regular camp. And if he can't handle it, you just cancel the fight. You know what I'm saying? If he got a little bit of an injury that's 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 related or that's, you know, kind of related to the car accident, you know, you just, you know, you, you shut him down. So um, I believe when they both come out of camp healthy, um, obviously it will be no fans there. I heard top rank say they fights won't have no media. So, um, once again, it won't be no media members there. UFC had a few media outlets there, you know, with social distancing and stuff of that nature. But you're looking at a possible, you know, July 18th fight, possibly September, between Spence and Danny Garcia. It was relayed to me that it's 90 percent done. You can catch Luis Neri on the undercard versus Aaron Amadella from uh, an undefeated uh, fighter from Mexico, El Tiger, and also David Benavidez. You know, they like to stack them cards with Mexicans. So if they stacking that card with Mexicans. They probably doing something out west, you know what I'm saying? Uh, also, um, also kind of talk about some rumors as well. Uh, Diego Magadon, I think that's no Jesse or Diego, I can't remember. I think it was Jesse Magadon um, or Diego Magadon, one of the two. Um, I think they fighting uh, June 25th, right? Whatever the Magadons, one of them fighting June 25th on the top ranked card. Um, the IBF is saying that. Uh, Jojo Diaz is slated to fight as mandatory, even though I heard he signed a rematch with Tevin Farmer. So that should be very, very interesting right there. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think of some more uh, rumors that, that were told. Um, hold on. All right, so I had to stop and make sure I had the information to start back up. Um, Jesse Magadone is probably going to fight uh, June 9th on the Shakira Stevenson undercard, excuse me. Uh, so you can catch him on that. So it's good to see him back in the ring. Um, since he fought Isaac Dogbo, Dogbay, whatever his name is, I call him Dogbo. It's funny. Um, you know, he took it. He took a risk. So, you know, now he, you know, getting it back, rhythm and things, and trying to get a title again. 
Uh, Dog, Isaac Dog Bay, you can find him fighting June 25th. So Isaac Dog Bay is returning to the ring uh, June 25th. Don't really have an opponent. Uh, I'm just wondering what happened to Nicholas Walters. Shit, you know, when people, the foreign, you know, guys of color lose Bob Graham, don't be trying to put him back on. So not sure we'll wait, we'll wait Isaac Dog Bay coming in at. But uh, you can catch him and Jesse McAdone coming back in the month of June. Jesse probably going to be on the Secure Stevenson on the undercard June 9th. And Darby going to be on the June 25th card. So it's good to see uh, both those fighters get back in the ring because that was a great fight they had. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Darby went on to have, you know, a good run until he ran into a man under Vethes. Also, you know, for you Roman Chocolito fans, uh, he will be returning um, versus Andrew Maloney, Australian fighter. So he will be returning in. I'm guessing that's going to be on the zone. Um, so you got know, some good fights that's going to come up, man. So uh, the zone is, you know, I mean, top rank for the most part. It's putting their schedule out here. They kind of leading the forefront of uh, boxing, right? You know, they leading the forefront and showing how people, how they going to do it. But they the company that, bam, they're been around the longest. So it's only right. So the PVC in the zone going to see our top rank come back. I hope by the time they come back, fans will be allowed. But if not, they kind of use that procedure that they, they're using. And then on top of that, Leo Santa Cruz and Devontae Tank Davis, Showtime pay-per-view has been pushed back due to uh, Errol and Danny Garcia. That's kind of one of the cause and effects. I mean, they're possibly moving it up to July or September. But I think that helps, you know, uh, Leo Santa Cruz and Tank. I think I hope Tank to get back in shape, you know, deal with he dealing with, the whole Mayweather Haney situation. And he says it's going to motivate him. So you got, you know, PBC, uh, you know, starting to talk about some things. We know more about the pay-per-views than we know about, you know, the kicks, the kick, the kickstarts they have and the kickback fights they have. So uh, Tank and Leo, Showtime pay-per-view going to get pushed back because they going to do Danny and Earl first. And they're going to stack it with some Mexicans on the undercard, even though it'll probably be a good chance that no fight fans is going to be in attendance for the fight. So that's something to look at, man. Let me know what you guys think about it. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business questions, inquiry, response, your video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash out, PayPal, description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. And uh, let me know what you guys think about, you know, all the news and the rumors I talked about. Love to hear your comments. One time for the one time we gone.